Kiora, folks. The quotient rule handles situations where you have a quotient involved, uh, and that's just a fancy word for a fraction. So if you have a function divided by another function, then you will likely need to use the quotient rule if you're looking for the derivative. So let's set this one up. If f at x equals x and g at x equals sine of x, and we are looking to differentiate f at x divided by g of x, well, this is going to be x over sine x, which seems like an innocent enough function. And we know the standard derivatives for x and for sine x, but combined together in this sort of divided by fractional relationship, we can't be so certain. So we need the quotient rule to handle this. So if I have any function f at x divided by another function, and the whole thing I'm looking to differentiate, that's my d by dx. Now what I can do, keeping in mind here that the order is important, so f comes on top, so my first term is going to be f prime. When we looked at the product rule, f came first, f times g, and then I used f prime for my first term, so I want to try to keep that similarity. So I'm going to say f prime at x times g at x, and I'm writing this because I'm expecting a big fraction here, so that's why I'm leaving some room like this. The next term I have a subtract, and I'm going to do the opposite or the reverse again. So this is now just f at x times g prime at x. And then in the bottom, I have this g of x actually squared. So this is going to be just the same as it was before. It's not a derivative on the bottom, but that is going to be squared. So it looks a bit more intimidating when you first get started here. So it looks a bit more intimidating when you first get started because the formula is so big, and indeed it is, and these derivatives can get a little bit messy because of how big that formula is. So let's do this example here, x and sine x. So I've got this set up and I rewrote my quotient rule. So again, let's just go through how the quotient rule works. In the numerator, I write f, and in the denominator, I write g. You could use different letters, of course. And then my derivative says you take the top, so that's the derivative of the top, f prime times g minus the reverse, and then you divide by the bottom squared. So I think in terms of top and bottom often, because it's uh, quick to say and easy to think about when you have a fraction. So I have derivative of the top, and then that sets up my other terms. And then I know that on the bottom, I just rewrite what I have and I square it. So my derivative now is going to be x over sine x. And you might want to take some notes off to the side. The derivative here, so f prime equals 1, and the derivative here, g prime equals cosine or you can just do it as you go. So my first piece is f prime, and that's one. I'll rewrite it even though we don't have to. My second piece is g, which is just as is. There's no derivative there. So that's sine x. Write my big divisor. Okay, my second term is f by itself, and then g prime, which is cos of x. Now on the bottom, whatever you had on the bottom before, you still have, you just have to square it. So I'm going to write sine x, put some brackets and square it, and that's it. You, even though this derivative is quite large, you can do it all in one line because it involves multiple pieces. So let's maybe just clean this up a bit. So sine x minus x cosine x divided by sine squared of x. Remember, if you have a trig function and you square it, you can bring in the 2 inside. Um, 
like so. Okay, that should finish this up. Let's look at another example. Using the quotient rule, find the derivative. So again, this function looks innocent enough. I have 4x plus 10. That should be an easy derivative. And I have 7x minus 1, another easy derivative. But what happens when they're combined together? So let's say that on top here is f at x and on bottom is g of x. So f prime is going to be 4 and g prime is going to be 7. So my overall derivative f prime at x and actually now I see I've used f twice here so this is something that you shouldn't do so I need to relabel this one that's fine I've got other letters let's use j and j prime because f prime refers to the whole fraction not just the top portion okay so this derivative now I start with the top and I take the derivative of the top so for my new letters that's j prime so that's four times and then I go to the bottom and you just rewrite it as is 7x minus 1 subtract. There's my divisor sign. Now my next term is going to be the top as is and then times the derivative of the bottom. So 4x minus 10 stays the same. The derivative of the bottom is g prime. So that's 7. And then on the bottom there's no derivative so you have to write this down again and then square it. Now my calculus is done, I've taken my derivatives and I've used the quotient rule, but this definitely looks like I could simplify. So I'll just go through and expand and see if I can collect like terms and simplify. So I don't think I can do much more with this. My x's on the top cancel out, but I'm still left with a bit of an awkward function here as my derivative. We have a new function in this quotient rule. I have here an exponential function in the numerator and then a trig function in the denominator. So f prime at x equals, now I have a four out front, so let's just park the four out front and leave it. And then I'll do whatever I need to do inside the brackets. And maybe I'll do this one in reverse. I know on the bottom I'm going to square it. So I'll have co squared x on the bottom and then on the top, keep in mind my 4 is not participating, I'm going to write f prime, so that's, or sorry, the top prime, so that's e to the x, times cos x, subtract, and now I'm going to write the top by itself. Now the exponentials just show up as themselves. And then the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So I'm going to write sine x, and then change this minus to a positive, because I had a double negative in there. And maybe you want to factor out an e to the x on top. So I'm left with sine x plus cosine x on the top, and then cosine squared x in the denominator.